Wow, we thank God uh, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, today we have with us uh, Dr. Gedenji Getahi. Dr. Getahi is a CEO of AMREF Africa and uh, he has been quite uh, insightful in terms of giving information and helping people understand uh, the situation of the COVID-19 and how to cope with it. Karub San Daktari. Asante sana. It's a good time. Uh, it's good to see you after a long time. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And I'm also your mishriki, you know. I'm yes, I remember. <laughs> so it's been long. We see each other virtually on live, Facebook live. Yes. But you're doing a good job. At least the gospel has continued. Amen. Yes. I'm happy that yeah. uh, you are also encouraging me to continue doing yes. what I'm doing. Yes. Yes. And uh, this COVID manenos has kept us off. I, actually, I thought we should call it... Uh, physical distancing instead of social distancing. It is physical distancing. I actually have insisted on that. Physical distancing rather than social distancing. Because uh -huh. social distancing implies that we can't even have a conversation even on social media, on live uh, Facebook. Yes. It's physical distancing mm -hmm. like we are doing now. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Ah, thank you very much. Mm. So, uh, Dr. Ita is here to help us un uh, understand the situation of the COVID-19 and even life beyond what I would call beyond in quotes COVID-19. But first, uh, I would ask him to tell us, why is it called COVID-19? It is called COVID-19 because uh, COVID means coronavirus disease. Mm -hmm. The 19 is to show it is the one that was discovered in 2019. Okay. Because there were other coronavirus diseases before. The coronavirus has been with us for many years. Ah, so it's not a new it's not a new virus. Thing. It's not a new the coronavirus is not a new virus. Mm -hmm. But the type we are experiencing now mm -hmm. is new. So mm -hmm. the virus itself is what is being called novel, which means new coronavirus, uh -huh. Uh -huh. which is causing a disease called coronavirus disease twenty nineteen. COVID wow. twenty nineteen. COVID nineteen. COVID twenty nineteen. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. Can you maybe tell us the status uh, right now? Uh, where are we in terms of uh, conquering the virus? Are we somewhere? So we are somewhere. I think uh, the issue is that the one thing that people need to understand is that uh, this is not the first epidemic of disease we are finding. Mm -hmm. So epidemics of diseases have always been there. Mm -hmm. uh, since time immemorial, I mean, if any of you read the Bible, it will tell you how plagues came, mm -hmm. uh, wiped out people, came back. Were, uh, uh, what we, the Bible calls the plague came and did and did. Yeah. They were just epidemics of diseases. Ah. They were epidemics of diseases, uh -huh. just like we're experiencing now. Yeah. And therefore, they have been there since time immemorial. Mm. They'll come because there is either several things. Mm -hmm. One is that just like we try to protect ourselves and survive, mm -hmm. Organisms like viruses, bacteria, animals, they also mutate to survive. Mm -hmm. Because we are all organisms. Mm -hmm. They are living organisms. They are living organisms. So they are also trying to survive. Mm -hmm. You remember that terminology, survival for the fittest. fittest yes. So just like we think we are surviving because we are fit, mm -hmm. animals are also trying to survive. They are putting face masks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they are also putting their own face masks, trying to say, how do I get now around uh -huh. Reverend Jero? Yes. This is why you develop immunity to this, then they change. Uh -huh. they, they are surviving. Wow. That's why you use antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Then they learn how to overcome the antibiotic. That's why we have what we call antibiotic resistance. Ah. Like now, if you look at TB, tuberculosis, mm -hmm. you know, the drugs we use to treat TB, mm -hmm. many of them now mm -hmm. are not usable. They mm -hmm. have become the animal, the, the bacteria mm -hmm. have managed to go around them. Yeah. So we have to discover new ones. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we have people now dying of what we call multi-drug resistant TB. Oh. TB that cannot be treated. Yeah. This happens also if you look at uh, influenza or yeah. flu. Mm -hmm. There are vaccines that are used for flu, but they have to keep changing because the organisms learn and then they, try they mutate. mutate. That's what they call mutate. They change. Uh -huh. So uh, what is going on is that uh, we've always had these plagues. Now when they come, mm -hmm. They will come, they overwhelm the population, mm -hmm. and then many people will find also, even ourselves, we are surviving. Mm -hmm. So we find a way of overcoming that new infection. Mm -hmm. So we develop antibodies. Mm -hmm. That's why you keep hearing antibodies. Yeah. Those help us overcome that. Mm -hmm. So when it is, many of us have managed to overcome it, it mm -hmm. disappears. Mm -hmm. But then it doesn't disappear completely. It can mm -hmm. go into a corner mm -hmm. and find a new way of attacking of us, then back. come back. Yeah. So that's how infections go. So wow. we have suffered epidemics over time. Now, mm -hmm. the reason this is being called a pandemic mm -hmm. is because it's affecting more than one country. Ah. So, in when a country... it's widespread, it's a pandemic. It's a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So, in Kenya, we are not having a pandemic. Mm -hmm. We are having an epidemic. Uh, what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> epidemic, pandemic... So, the difference is this. So, mm -hmm. a pandemic mm -hmm. is a sudden 
infection of a particular of a new disease or yes. any disease even mm -hmm. cholera can yeah. go in an epidemic mm -hmm. even mal you know you can just get a, a spike mm -hmm. In infections, mm -hmm. that spike, sudden spike in infections, mm -hmm. is an epidemic. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. It can be from an old disease mm -hmm. or come from a new disease. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you can also have a cholera epidemic uh -huh. right now. In fact, mm -hmm. we are having cholera. Yeah, it's epidemics coming. happening. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. epidemic happens all the time. We have mm -hmm. a cholera epidemic. We have mm -hmm. this epidemic. Now, if an epidemic happens in multiple countries, mm -hmm. meaning that the disease now is affecting many countries at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's then called a pandemic. pandemic. Ah, so you cannot can say Kenya is having a pandemic. Kenya no. is having an <laughs> epidemic, but the world is having a pandemic. A pandemic. Yes. So uh, the situation locally is an epi epi it's an epidemic. It's an epidemic. Of, of, yes. Wow. Of, of coronavirus. I have to disease. be very careful when I'm using those terminologies. You know, people use them interchangeably. So yeah. and no one will accuse you. Mm -hmm. But for understanding, that's, that's really it. <laughs> and so yes. mm -hmm. when you ask now, where are we with it? Mm -hmm. So we know that this epidemic has multiple infections going up mm -hmm. and uh, we know in kenya we are still in the in the rice phase yeah. so you mean we have not hit the we have not hit the, the peak curve yeah we haven't no. remember that any epidemic we've had even the ones of plague as referred to in the bible to the current one mm -hmm. they all take a shape of slow mm -hmm. then they peak mm -hmm. then they reach a top and then, then they drop off mm -hmm. and they go Ah, okay mm -hmm. so even this one mm -hmm. it's exactly the same shape we expect yeah so right now we are on the right side we are rising mm -hmm. we will reach a point where we reach the top now mm -hmm. how do we reach the top i'm still answering a question of where are we mm -hmm. so when do we reach the top mm -hmm. you can reach the top in many ways yeah. one you can reach the top number one if you get a vaccine mm -hmm. getting a vaccine means that you infect you 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 mimic as if you've infected many yeah. people before yeah. they actually get the infection. Yeah. Meaning that now even if the infection comes, mm -hmm. they have already prepared themselves mm -hmm. to fight it. Mm -hmm. Then that now can cut the curve. Mm -hmm. And then everyone now cannot be infected. Yeah. In the absence of a vaccine, which is what we expect, mm -hmm. we expect there will be no vaccine for COVID-19 disease maybe in another year or so. Uh -huh. We'll expect that the curve will still go mm -hmm. and curve downwards. So why does it curve downwards? Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it keep on going? Mm -hmm. Because... If you take, for example, you take um, a million people in one community yeah. and you say this is one population, this is a country of a million people. The virus infects the first person. Yeah. Then you have 999,000 people who are not infected. Mm. That one person infects three. Yeah. The three now, now you have 999,000 minus three, you know, like 99999, mm -hmm. you know, like that. So you start getting infected. Mm -hmm. Then the infected infect the ones who are not infected. Mm. So it goes on like that. If there's no vaccine, mm -hmm. it means every people will continue infecting each other over time because mm -hmm. they're all susceptible. Mm -hmm. No one, you know, you can stay at home, mm -hmm. and uh, what you do when you stay at home is that you delay when you get oh, infected, so or you delay the rate at which other people get infected. infected That's yeah. why we are staying at home oh. to delay the rate. As we wait for the vaccine, as we wait for the vaccine, yeah, or as we wait for the government to test more. Mm -hmm. We are not, we are not staying at home so that we kill the virus. The virus mm -hmm. is there. Mm -hmm. We are delaying. That's what you're hearing. The curve. Yeah. So. If you say this curve I showed you like that, mm -hmm. if it is peaks like that in a very short time, mm -hmm. that is if we never stayed home, we never mm -hmm. washed our hands, mm -hmm. just let it go, mm -hmm. majority of people will get infected, mm -hmm. they'll heal and they'll go on. Mm -hmm. But the few people who will get severe disease mm -hmm. will overwhelm the health system. We will not uh, have enough hospitals yeah, to take care of them. Yeah. Families will be overwhelmed yes. because you're hearing, oh, my mother is in hospital, my father, my, you know, so you get over home. Yeah. So what do you do? You reduce, you reduce the rate of infection so that instead of the curve being like that, mm -hmm. it is like that. Ah. But the same volume mm -hmm. in terms of people infected, infected, if you measure the volume under yeah. that, mm -hmm. and the volume under that, it's the same. Just a delay. It and just delay. Okay, okay. When you delay, you then mm -hmm. allow the system to adjust, get more tests. Let me ask you a question because vaccine. I've had this yes. discussed. Yeah. Is it then, because some countries are saying it's okay to allow people to get infected yeah. so that they can get the immunity? Yes. Uh, just leave them let people let people in fact mm -hmm. that is that is uh, now the next thing i want to talk about because mm -hmm. what now those countries are talking about is coming something we call hard in hard, hard immunity mm -hmm. h-e-r-d or oh, not hard, not but hard. hard you know i've had people say hard <laughs> gumu <laughs> immunity, <laughs> gumu. Oh. It's, it's like a hard of cattle yes. or a hard of sheep uh -huh. so what happens is as i told you mm -hmm. if this curve is like this mm -hmm. why does it go down mm -hmm. it doesn't go down when everyone gets infected mm -hmm. it goes down when a particular number in the population mm -hmm. big enough mm -hmm. gets infected mm -hmm. 
that the likelihood mm -hmm. that when I meet Reverend Jero, I am not infected already, it's mm -hmm. very low. Mm -hmm. So the people who are not infected already are very unlikely to meet people who are infected. Uh -huh. That's what we call herd immunity. Mm -hmm. So the virus can no longer find a new person to infect. In fact, yes. Because those it needs to find mm. are too sparsely That's spread out. Mm. And when you reach that, you reach that when you achieve about 60 to 70 percent of the population. Mm -hmm. The other 30 mm -hmm. are too dispersed to be found. Uh -huh. So the virus dies off. Yeah. Like it has nothing to feed on anymore, yeah, if you yeah, try to say. Yeah. So that's what we call herd immunity. Now the danger, yes. some countries are following that, like Sweden mm -hmm. say they'll follow that. UK mm -hmm. had said they'll follow that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. The danger is that you are basically letting it go, mm -hmm. so you have to be prepared to take care of anyone who needs hospital, yeah, yeah. have enough medicine for them, have enough money have to take care of them. To, you have yeah. to have the capacity. Yeah. If you don't have the capacity, mm. then you can't go that way. And also remember that there is also a social side to this. Yeah. You, f you sound reckless. If you yeah. say, let people get sick, we'll know yeah. what to do with them. Mm. Despite the fact that it will be one of the strategies, mm. it sounds reckless. That's yeah. why the UK had yeah. to change their, their, strategy. their strategy. Yeah. Yeah. There's something else I wanted to ask you, because we have had a lot of uh, conspiracy theories. Yeah and also myths that are related to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are some of these myths that uh, people have taken as truths and uh, they have been misled? There have been many of them. Some of them have to do with their own individual bodies. Mm -hmm. People believing that if you take certain herbs, mm -hmm garlic or mm. even certain foods mm. vitamin c garlic lemon mm -hmm. we've seen that in tanzania take yeah. limau yeah. that it's going to protect you against infection mm -hmm. no it will not mm -hmm. of course a strong immunity may reduce the severity of the disease mm -hmm. if you have a strong immunity it is less likely yeah. that you'll get hit too hard but the infection itself will get you so mm. getting eating those things will not suffer from the infection mm. that's number one the second uh, thing i've heard is african people are too strong to be affected yeah, the that's, black skin. <laughs> the black skin. That's a lie. Yeah. I mean, we project that we are going to get hundreds and hundreds of thousands across Africa. But we the have seen that happen because we, our, uh, what we are told is that uh, our kind of infection is about me very mild. I'll, not, I'll, I'll come to that. You see, uh, there are two things that uh, people need to distinguish. Yes. Infection uh -huh. and severity. Severity, okay. So infection, mm. the black skin doesn't protect anybody from infection. Uh -huh. We will be infected just like people in Italy, in Spain and everywhere else. Mm -hmm. And even now, even as we say we have 1,300 cases, I can assure you we have tens of thousands of cases out there mm -hmm. that have got infected, healed, but no one knew because they never got symptoms and they were never tracked. Yeah. Okay? So we'll get infected. In fact, in Africa now we expect by uh, maybe in a few months we'll have 400,000 cases. So, infection will continue. Mm. But we also know that the cases we are getting are not as severe as they were in the, in the uh, West. In the West, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. The reason has mm -hmm. nothing to do with the black skin. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you a few reasons. Mm -hmm. One reason mm -hmm. is if you go to Italy and you look at the total population and you ask, how many old people does Italy have above 60? Mm -hmm. they, are more, they are about 25%. Mm. Quarter of the population. Out of every four people, mm. one person is above 60. Yeah. Okay? So demographics. Oh. The demographics. Mm. If you come to Africa, mm. only 3% are above 60. Mm -hmm. So, because the severity of the disease is affecting more the elderly people, mm -hmm. the case, the, the death rate in Africa is, bit, right now what we've seen, is almost half the death rate in the West. those countries. Mm. It is because of age, demographics. Uh -huh. Number two... Nothing is, to do with the skin. Nothing to do with the skin. Mm -hmm. Number two, remember is that if you look at hypertension, diabetes, yeah. obesity, mm -hmm. if you look at those countries, mm -hmm. the prevalence of those diseases mm -hmm. are more significant yeah. than they are here. Yeah. In, terms of, in fact, if you look at hypertension, it started in Africa maybe in the 70s. Yeah. Those countries have had hypertension for a much longer period because yeah. of our lifestyle. Mm. I mean, Masai is who are grazing goats there and very unlikely to have <laughs> hypertension diabetes. Mm. But a lot of these countries that were developed earlier mm -hmm. started what we call sedentary lifestyles much mm -hmm. earlier than the Africa. Yeah. So the prevalence of those diseases is lower Masai, here. Yeah. Mm. And yet we know that hypertension and diabetes increase the risk. Yeah. So those are the reasons why the death rate is different. So it's a myth that yes, black, black people... Yes, black skin have nothing to do with uh -huh, it. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, they have nothing to do with it. No mm. scientific evidence that has mm. anything to do with it. Yeah. So is the death rate will be lower because we have less older people and we have less of hypertension and diabetes, mm. uh, smoking, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But remember then that we also have people who are above 60. Yeah. Those are the people who must worry us. Let me give mm. you a worrying statistic. Mm -hmm. If you look at Kenya now and the cases we have, 
we probably have had out of all the 1,200, there are about 62 men who are above 60 mm. who are in that total 1,300. Yeah. A third of them have died. A third? 30 percent. Where? Of, in Kenya. What do you mean? 30 percent of all men oh, above yeah. 60 mm -hmm. who are positive mm -hmm. have died. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which tells oh, you. Oh, those who are positive. Yeah. Yeah. Get those it. who are positive mm -hmm. and they are above 60 yeah. have died. Mm -hmm. So that tells you. And when you look at women mm. of the same age, mm. only 10% of those who have been positive mm -hmm. have died. And for men, 30%. Mm -hmm. Which tells you there is also a risk factor in gender. In gender, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you male or female? Yeah. There is also a risk factor in uh, age. So age, gender, gender, and then these other diseases mm -hmm. around it. Mm -hmm. So if you are somewhere listening and watching this and you ask yourself, I have my 65-year-old father mm -hmm. living with me, mm -hmm. he has hypertension, mm -hmm. and I'm a young man who is 30. Mm -hmm. I may not have a big risk, even if I get infected, mm -hmm. I may not have any symptoms. Yeah. But what impact will I have when I bring it home mm -hmm. to my father to your or parents. my mother? Yeah. So that's what we talk about mm -hmm. preventing or protecting the vulnerable. Protecting the vulnerable. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much for that, uh, because we have uh, many myths and we need to, and also because Piracy theories that are coming yes, up. The other myth I wanted to I wanted to talk about, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, I almost um, forgot uh -huh. uh, uh, for, forgot about. It's this means around, um, uh, for example, uh, the the fact that people are not seeing the diseased. They are not seeing many people in hospital. Yeah. So they believe therefore this thing doesn't exist. Actually, someone was asking. Yes. Can you tell us where these people are? <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> for which hospital are they? <laughs> we go see them. <laughs> no. <laughs> or we avoid them. <laughs> so, and we'll come to Sigma. Yes. So, the thing is this. If mm. you think, let's just break it down. Mm -hmm. Assuming that Kenya has 10,000 people infected. We mm -hmm. know 1,200. Yes. But assuming we have 10,000. Mm -hmm. Only 20% mm -hmm. of the people we are testing positive mm -hmm. have any symptoms. Yes. That's what we have seen. Mm. So, if you have 10,000, then you expect only 2,000 people would have any form of symptom. Mm -hmm. Now, out of 2,000, some will have, a, maybe half will have a cough, mm -hmm. half will have a fever, mm -hmm. another few will have difficulty in breathing. Yes. 2,000 people mm -hmm. in the Kenyan system, in the Kenyan health system, mm -hmm. are nothing. Because remember, mm -hmm. we have thousands of pharmacies that people yes. go to. Mm -hmm. We have thousands mm -hmm. of hospitals. Mm -hmm. So when you actually say you're spreading 2,000 <laughs> people into 50,000 uh -huh. health facilities, mm -hmm. including pharmacies, mm -hmm. not even to add herbalists, yes. you can't feel it. So <laughs> people, you know, we will start feeling, if we reach now a million people infected, yes. or 10 million, yes. then you will actually see the cases in hospital. But right now, there are too few to even be noticeable. To be noticed. Yeah. Wow. That explains that because uh, that was one of the reasons why people are saying this thing doesn't even exist. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. why I thought it was important to talk about it. It's good yeah. to mention that. Yeah. Now, let's talk about social stigma. Yes. People are in fear. Yes. And whenever you get into fear, you stigma is one of the most inevitable, inevitable things. Yeah. Uh, how can we prevent or protect this from going on? Because you have people who have stigmatized others because of their... Uh, COVID-19. Yeah. So, if your child has measles, mm -hmm. or your child has sickened pox, mm -hmm. or your child has pneumonia, mm -hmm. do you stigmatize them because they are unwell? Mm -mm. You don't. Mm. So, what we need to remember is that any of us is susceptible yeah. to this disease, mm -hmm. and therefore any of us, even as we stigmatize, we may as well be infected at that particular point. Mm. Because the only reason we are stigmatized that person is not because they are the only ones infected, it's only because they have had a positive test in the lab. Mm -hmm. Nothing is to tell, by the way, between the, the two of us, mm -hmm. that That's one of us is not infected or both mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Until you do a lab test. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So stigma is a form of discrimination that is unnecessary mm -hmm. because even when you hear somebody has pneumonia you don't stigmatize them you actually go and see them yeah. the fear is being caused the stigma is being caused mainly by the, the panic mm. that actually that person could infect me mm. so two things to remember number one they'll not infect you if you take the necessary measures mm -hmm. and those measures are not only to be taken for the person you know is positive mm. it's for everyone else this is why I'm wearing a mask, mm. yet I know Reverend Jero, Could he be. is my reverend, mm. he is my mchungaji, mm. but I'm wearing a mask. Mm. Why, you know, why is it that because he's my mchungaji <laughs> and I know him so well, we can't say, ah, forget about this thing. So, you must take the necessary measures. Masks, hand washing, distance. Whether the person is positive or not. Mm -hmm. So, when you take those, then the positive person 
is not going to infect you. Mm -hmm. The next thing people need to know is that I've seen stigma even after people have gone treated, they are negative, and people still stigmatize yeah. when they are returning home. Yeah. People who have already recovered cannot infect you anymore. Mm -hmm. They cannot infect you anymore. They are probably even but less you have of risky. Where they, they get reinfected. Or they, they, uh -huh. the, the so we can talk about that. Yeah. In fact, the people who you know who have recovered are probably less risky than the people you don't know have uh -huh. ever been confirmed to have positive. Wow. Because you might treat them mm -hmm. as normal, you know, as Mutai says, mm -hmm. you treat them normal, okay. then they treat you abnormally, abnormally <laughs> because, <laughs> because you didn't know they were infected. <laughs> yeah. But somebody you know was infected. Mm -hmm. And uh, went through the treatment. And went through the treatment. Yes. It's, it's not going to infect you. They yeah. have already been treated. Now, mm -hmm. this issue around people testing positive after infection mm -hmm. has been studied. What we now hear is, you see, you need to understand the test we do. The mm -hmm. test we do for coronavirus mm -hmm. is we take some sample in your mouth or your nose, mm -hmm. and in some instances when people are very sick in their lungs, mm -hmm. it is tested for the presence of the virus. Mm -hmm. Now, because the virus is not a, it's a, it's a living contraption. It's almost mm -hmm. like a junk of a car. It's mm -hmm. just put together three things, some fat, some protein, and something we call an RNA. Mm -hmm. So they are conjected together. It's actually very, if once you wash it soap, it just disintegrates and goes away. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's not, it's like a makeshift mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Now, when you test it, you find it. Now, if the body overcomes it mm -hmm. and you go back and test, mm -hmm. do you know there are still dead viruses oh, in the system? In the system. Yeah, mm -hmm. the one that got killed by the body. Mm -hmm. So if you test, do you, you test could for find antibodies them. or do you test for the virus itself? We test for the virus itself. That's so called the antigen. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. So you could still find those fragments of the old virus mm -hmm. and they test positive. Mm -hmm. Then you say this person is still positive. Yeah. That's what is coming out. Mm -hmm. So in actual sense, that reinfection has not been proven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So people after the virus are able to get protection for at least, we know for now, we think it's maybe one year plus, mm -hmm. but we don't know how long the infection, the, you know, like chicken pox. Yeah. When your child gets chicken pox, after that they are, they are, they are immune for life. Yeah. But for coronavirus, we do not know whether the protection is for life or it's for a year. We'll know as it we go along. It has not been established. We'll know as we go along. Yeah, because again, the, the, the thought of if you get infected and you're healed, yes, you can't be... You should not be infected again. Again, because you have the you immunity. You have the immunity. Yeah. Unless now the immunity wears off after mm -hmm. a year, and we don't know yet, because okay. we've not even finished a year. So are we anywhere about getting the, the vaccine? It is going to take time, because vaccines take time because you're basically infecting somebody with a particular form for them to, for the body to learn it and develop the antibody mm. so it takes time to measure because you don't want to give somebody a vaccine and they get sick mm. so it takes a lot of time mm. so we think normally vaccines take more than two years mm -hmm. actually very long mm. if we manage to get this vaccine in 18 months mm -hmm. it'll have been one of the fastest vaccines ever ah. which means we are thinking a vaccine maybe by mid next year mm. and then after that you have to remember that it has to be produced we have seven billion people in the world Mm -hmm. so it has to be produced in large numbers mm -hmm. in a short time yeah. and distributed mm -hmm. and given. Can you imagine, even mm -hmm. when we do polio campaigns, mm -hmm. how long does it take for the government to cover 99% of the children? Mm -hmm. It takes very long. Mm -hmm. So all those factors need to be put in, mm -hmm. in contact. So we have to think about the vaccine not being there for us mm -hmm. for another two years. Oh, two years. Yeah. Do you think uh, there is any truth? Uh, I know these uh, also theories that are coming up yeah. that there are people interested in the vaccine for their ulterior motives in terms of the people who are the new agers. I know you've had read about this. Actually, that is another myth I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. This circulating uh, information, and one, actually one of the reverends mm -hmm. in the PCA <laughs> reached out to me yes. and said, I've seen a reverend preaching about, and I'll talk about this openly, about yeah. Bill Gates yeah. and saying these things yeah. about the interest Gates in vaccines. Carries the whole weight, yeah. He carries the whole weight yeah. and vaccines are not good things mm -hmm. and all this. And this reverend was reaching to me and said, give me information mm -hmm. so that I'm able to challenge my colleague, colleague. reverend yeah. with this information. Because all of us are prone to mm -hmm. misinformation. Mm -hmm. The truth is this, that vaccines, if you look at the world's biggest inventions in healthcare, mm -hmm. it's vaccines mm -hmm. and antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before antibiotics and vaccines, if you read the history of the world, diseases used to come and kill a quarter of a country. 25% yeah. of people just die. Mm -hmm. And you can look again, I just refer you back to the plagues in the Bible. They used to come and wipe out a whole community, a whole country, a whole whatever. When we started using antibiotics and vaccines, that reduced because we, antibiotics we help, we help us to treat the bacteria infections. But because viruses don't have treatment, mm -hmm. 
then the only way is to protect us against them. Mm -hmm. This, but there are also there are also bacteria that we use vaccines for. For mm -hmm. example, any woman who is pregnant receives a tetanus vaccine. Yeah. To make sure that you don't get tetanus when you're pregnant, it will kill you and kill, yeah, it's a vaccine, mm. tetanus vaccine, mm. because it could kill you and kill your child. Mm. All of us took our children for BCG, BCG when yeah. we were young mm -hmm. to protect them against pneumonia. Mm -hmm. All pneumonia of us took our children virus? Yeah, for pneumonia tuberculosis. And now there is a pneumonia uh, vaccine. Mm -hmm. We take our children for it. Mm -hmm. Many of us who are young children have seen something called um, rotavirus, where mm -hmm. young children get severe diarrhea. Yeah. They are just having watery diarrhea. You have to take them to hospital to be given uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason that has reduced is because of a virus right. we call the rotavirus mm -hmm. vaccine. Uh -huh. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we all took our children for polio vaccination. That's mm -hmm. why we don't see polio people. We used to see them in the past. We take our children for measles vaccine. So vaccines are essential mm. to a healthy lifestyle. Mm. That can never be debated. Mm. They're essential to a healthy lifestyle. Now, where does this opposition to vaccines come from? Mm. And where did it come from? You need to understand that because... Uh, you need the, to understand that. Even the church has been up to that, you know. Yes, the remember the there was a big debate. No, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So there is no debate that vaccines are useful in protecting us against common diseases. Mm -hmm. There are even cholera virus, by the way. Mm -hmm. All those are there. There are virus for cholera. There are all those things. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what happened. Some time ago, there was a virus, there was a vaccine called MMR. Mumps, uh, measles, and rubella. It was given a lot in the West. It never come here. Here we vaccinate for, uh, we, don't, we don't have a lot of mumps. So oh, we, the mumps. Yeah, yeah you remember mm, mumps. Remember. So mm. in the West, there was a lot of mumps. They used to have a vaccine for mumps. mumps. Mm. They used to have a vaccine for something called rubella. Mm. And then it was mixed with measles as well. Here we give measles on its own, you know. So this particular combination vaccine mm. was at some point associated with autism. Oh. So that children who were given this vaccine mm. was likely yes. to had a tendency mm. to develop um, autism. autism. yes. So, and, and if you search, you say MMR and autism, you'll find a lot of articles mm, on it. Mm. This is where these campaigns against vaccinations started. Uh. So these people are called anti-vaxxers. They mm -hmm. generally are known, mm -hmm. they are largely in America and mm -hmm. uh, Europe, and they are against vaccination. Uh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are people who drive this current so that vaccines are not good. And, oh, and of course, they, you know, they have funding, so they do all those things. So where does Bill Gates come in? Bill Gates come in because, comes in because a few years ago, maybe in the 90s, when child, we were losing, do you know between the 90s and now, number of deaths of children has come down by more than 50%. Mm -hmm. Deaths per year or oh, per day or per month. Mm -hmm. More than 50%. Whereas we used to lose 100, we are losing 50 or less because of vaccines. So in the early 90s, you, anyone will know the government ran a vaccination program, which was called the Extended Immunization Program. Now, that program was not properly funded. The government would have some money, sometimes not have enough money, and they would vaccinate against polio, TB, all these things. Then, somewhere early 2000s or late 1990s, the world formed what's called the Global Vaccine Alliance mm -hmm. to make sure that poor countries can afford vaccines whose prices are negotiated and they are available for everyone, whether you can afford or not. Mm -hmm. Bill Gates Foundation was one of the ones that funded the formation uh -huh. of Gavi. Yep. Those called Gavi. Mm -hmm. They put in a lot of money. Even up to now, they put in probably 3 billion shillings every year into Gavi. Other countries, U.S. government, European governments, even uh, our own countries, even Kenya, put money into Gavi to ensure vaccines are available for everyone. So vaccines are not driven by Bill Gates. It's just that he's one of the biggest funders. Yeah, funders so this is why he's been mixed yeah, into this is, conversation. Yeah, I exactly. I get you. I get yeah. you. No, uh, we need to end this uh, interview. Yes. But uh, it won't be good if we don't talk about post COVID 19 quotes. Yes. What you're calling the new normal. What should we, should we expect and what should we do yeah. as we wait for to normalize? To normalize. Because, yeah, we have to cope yeah. with the vaccine exactly. and continue living. We have to continue living. Yes. So, very quickly, what we need to look at is assuming you know right now the decisions around curfew lockdown are also mixed up with political decisions mm. and you know so i don't comment about that so yes. assuming the government eventually will lift these restrictions what is the new normal the new normal is something called containment meaning that you have to continue taking some measures to reduce the rate of infection whereas the virus one you no know, one infected person can infect up to four people if you take containment 
you reduce the number of people one infected person can mm. infect, which mm. then is what reduces the rate of infection. infection yeah. So to do that, even if we are to open curfew and borders, social distancing will be required, meaning that gatherings are still going to be yeah. uh, discouraged. Mm -hmm. Big gatherings are going to be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Big meetings and conferences will be discouraged for maybe another year or two. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing is that hand washing, wearing of masks will continue. Will kids go back to school? It is likely that we'll start with the candidate classes. Mm -hmm. They go back to school mm -hmm. because you can then manage the numbers over mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. before you start bringing up the younger children mm -hmm. back to school when the virus is, is off on the other side of the peak. So what will mean travel? Will it open? It will open, but it will open slowly. Maybe domestic, then maybe a few countries before it can go back to normal. Mm -hmm. Will people go back to work? Yes, people will go back to work, but they will be required to observe social distancing at work. So in our office at the church, you may find that only maybe two people, not five, mm -hmm. can stay in the same office. Yeah. And that will go on for many months, maybe a year. Mm. The final thing is to remember that as we do containment, mm. because it means people are back but you are taking measures, then we must think about the vulnerable. So the next thing is for us to think about how do we protect those it's who are vulnerable right. as mm. we go back to work. Mm -hmm. So if you are living with somebody above 60, think whether you want to work from home or go back to the office. Oh. My recommendation is if you live with somebody above 60, and maybe male and also has a maybe hypertension diabetes do not go back to the office mm -hmm. work from, work home. from home if you have to because livelihoods have to go on mm -hmm. move that person mm -hmm. and take them to somewhere where you think yes, they are safer mm -hmm. so we have to think of two measures containment mm -hmm. all the things i talked about and protecting or shielding the vulnerable that will be our new normal wow yeah but uh, it also comes with uh, new advantages yeah in terms of innovation yes with, uh, also the opportunities. The opportunities. Uh, can you talk about that a little yeah. bit? So the thing that is going to happen is, you know, at a global level, we expect that uh, global, global warming is going to slow down. Uh -huh. Because you see, <laughs> <laughs> we're all worried, and we're all worried globally that the world is warming up. And it's yes. true, it's warming up. You've seen mm. the floods happening. Yeah. The rains we experience have, mm. been, have not been seen for a long time. Mm. But because of the slowdown of the industries in China, mm. in the U.S., because of COVID, the world is breathing again. Wow. So that's a big advantage. Climate change, mm. we are going to see the slowdown in usage of fuel. Mm. I don't know how many times I've had to fuel my car mm. since this started. Since so mm. the fuel consumption has gone down. Yes. So those are advantages. And nature is going to breathe again. Mm. And we must thank God for that. that mm. you know, and even now you see, less vehicles will go back. People, mo many more people will start to work from home. Mm -hmm. Technology is going to become useful. Mm -hmm. Zoom and all these other things. Like Facebook Live like you've been mm -hmm. using. Mm -hmm. Churches are going to be more innovative. Mm -hmm. You know, the level of evangelism that has been done now mm -hmm. of the church. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen <laughs> that level of evangelism. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> so I hope that yes. doesn't drop. It, you continue to engage Washiriki mm -hmm. on Facebook Live. That's mm -hmm. a new innovation. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a lot of new innovations that are going to happen. So technology, less consumption of harmful gases that increase global warming mm -hmm. we are going to see families getting together mm. i have never spent as much time i've done in the same place with my children for the last maybe 10 years or so because wow. i'm always <laughs> traveling i'm always yeah, traveling but now we've been in this house mm. for three months mm. we cook lunch together we make dinner mm. together mm. we you know my children and my wife had, had to give you virtual com whole communion <laughs> exactly <laughs> you know virtual whole communion you know so <laughs> <laughs> you know, we might not give you much holy communion. So there are a lot of things that are advantageous. Yes. And some of these habits are going to remain with us. Yeah. You know, being here and playing with my children is going to become a new normal. New normal. The final thing is obviously, um, the, the, you know, the, the hand washing. Mm -hmm. That the hand washing, which we have always talked about since mm -hmm. we were young, mm -hmm. that it stops pneumonia, diarrhea, all those things, mm -hmm. is now going to be picked up by people. People mm -hmm. are going to wash their hands more mm -hmm. often. And this is an advantage for the general healthcare system. Wow. So there are many advantages yeah. that this will leave behind. So it comes with some opportunities. Yes, it does. Yeah, wow. yes, it does. Thank you very much. Maybe you can give us your parting shot as we uh, <laughs> conclude. What do you want to tell? My, my parting shot is to say, yeah. remember that everything that we do from here is mm -hmm. in your hands. Yes. So it's not, it's not in the government hands, it's mm -hmm. in your hands. Wherever mm -hmm. you are, you know, making sure that you wash your hands, you protect the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So do not make the TV announcements mm -hmm. your guide to life. <laughs> make your personal decisions, mm -hmm. the care and the love that you have for others, mm -hmm. your guide to yeah. life. Thank you so much, Dr. Yes. Uh, for accepting this interview and for uh, being very resourceful. Mm. We have always watched you and uh, we have admired the way you are passionate about Thank you. Uh, addressing mm. the needs and the fears of the people during mm. this time. 
and I know that you have you know, helped many people. Asante. So thank you for joining us on Facebook Live and uh, YouTube. May the Lord bless you. I'm um, seeing some comments here because there's some people who are live on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Some are telling me what about uh, end time preaching, about plagues of revelation. I can see someone asking that. That is John Saidim. Mm -hmm. This is a, a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Is it yet end time? <laughs> no, it's not. It's I mean, not the first it's pandemic. It's not the first plague. We have had we plagues. Had we've had many. Plague. In 1908, they killed probably 200 million people and we yes. still continued. So it's not end times. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, time for difficult transitions. Uh -huh. Yeah. And we'll still get more pandemics in the future. Yes. It's not the last one. Yes. Yes. Thank you for those who are watching. God bless you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Terry. God May bless the you. the Lord bless you for being there for us. And you too and the work you're doing. As Thank as you all and be blessed.